Good afternoon, elementary classes. It is great to come before you today and briefly touch on a few points about what the Bible says about love, respect, and obedience to and for one another. I'm going to read from a couple of different books in the Bible that will shed light on the message today. So before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity to come for our students and talk to them about how we should treat one another as you have shown your love for us and have treated us, O oh Heavenly Father, by sending your son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. As you use me to be the vessel for this message, I pray that it will be uplift for the receivers of your word. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. God provides us his Holy Spirit to enable us to live his way. To be one with God, we must put aside our evil ways and use his spirit to make us behave in a way pleasing to him. Now, <clears throat> how many of you have had a friend or even a classmate knock you down, maybe on purpose, for our younger students in first, second, third grade, maybe a classmate that broke your favorite color crayon or said something to you that you really didn't like, think about what your reaction was or what it might be if one of these things were to happen to you. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 23 to chapter 5, verse 2. In Ephesians 4, 23 starting, it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every day, excuse me, speak every man truth, with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. In five, chapter five, one, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. So the Apostle Paul wrote this in his letter to the church at Ephesus. And this portion outlines how we as Christians in the church should treat one another. It kind of outlines how we should respect each other and appreciate each other. Instead of being so quick to say something nasty to a friend if they hurt your feelings or say something you don't like, Paul said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto 
the hearers. Remember when others upset you, Paul says, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Many of you may be saying, oh, this is hard. I can't see myself doing that. But you will be surprised. Know that living a Christian life is a process. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we don't automatically change that very minute. Actions and things we used to do and say don't necessarily disappear right away. But if we listen to God on a daily basis, our spirit will start recognizing things that are not appropriate for believers to be doing. Your actions will begin to change for the better. Some of you have been in this school for several years, and for some of you, this is your first year at Odin Christian School. Have you recognized the change in your behavior, whether at school, at home, or even on the playground interacting with your friends? The more you listen to God, the more you will begin to trust him in all your ways. You won't be so quick to lash out when someone upsets you. You will not be quick to strike back if someone hits you. This overall may change, overall change may be slow, but it will happen the more you put your trust in God. By following God's words, your faith will grow and it will begin to inform your decisions. You will eventually develop a love for your fellow man. For example, your classmates, your teachers, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your friends. Turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12 starting at verse 9. Apostle Paul talks about being a living sacrifice to God, obeying God's word and loving thy neighbor. He, start, he, says, he says, starting at verse 9 through 19, Let love be without dissimulation. Auber that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which pursue, which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompent to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as, I, as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Essentially what Paul is saying is if someone hurts you, do not retaliate, but befriend them. For forgiveness may break the cycle of retaliation and lead to mutual understanding. It may even make your enemies feel ashamed and change their ways. You know, by forgiving people, it frees your mind of any bitterness which can weigh on you and make your days 
very sad. You know, God doesn't take kindly to fake love. God appreciates real love that takes effort to give to one another. If we work at it and sincerely mean the kind words we say to our friends, classmates, and family, we actually become a living testimony to the goodness of Jesus. Your friends and classmates will see the Christ in you, and your actions can serve as a witness to his works. The last point I want to make to you has to deal with being obedient to God's word and authority. God gave us ten commandments. The first commandment is to have no other gods before me. God commands us as well to honor thy mother and thy father. To be obedient to God's word, we must follow all his commandments, which will also teach us to be obedient to the government, and we can extend this to the teachers in our school. The book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, also talks about obedience to the government. And I will relate it to your teachers after I finish reading it. So turn to Romans, chapter 13. It says, Verses 1 through 7. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore res resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So in OCS, our teachers are the authority in your classrooms. And you must be obedient to what they say and the standards they put forth. For being obedient to your teachers is an expression of love, an appreciation for God's leadership, and a realization that they are instruments the Lord is using to bring you closer to the goodness of Jesus Christ. We have demerits which recognize negative behavior for a reason. We believe as a ministry of the church that God has established rules and guidelines for your teachers to use that will help you understand Christ and want to live a Christian life. So remember, to always love and appreciate your classmates, family, and friends, as well as be obedient to your teacher. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the elementary classes that we have here, Heavenly Father, in this school. Bless them. Let this word that they've heard today be a strength, be an inspiration, be a guide for them to conduct their lives in the classroom, at home, and in their community. On our Heavenly Father, we trust all things through thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.